Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Sisbidi, a true welcome to the grand finale of Fallout New Vegas, the worst career. Well, sort of. Anyway, sort of. We'll get to exactly what I mean by that at the end, but uh, we're about to start uh, mixing things up a little bit, shall we say. But before we do that, the world's most useless man needs to make sure that the NCR win the second battle of Hoover Dam. So, let's go and take care of that, shall we? So, the next step on that journey is investigating Gamora, because the NCR are worried the Ometas are about to do something bad. Which they are. They're about to build a bomb that blows up the Strip. Now, that is bad. And the main quest basically says, hey, find someone to replace the bosses. But, um, there's only one person you can replace the bosses with, and he's not exactly lacking in problems himself. Yeah, so say hello to Kachino, who's the only person who can actually take over from the bosses. He is not a very nice man. Business? What the fuck do you mean, business? You looking to get yourself burned? Now you start talking real clear, and I mean fucking crystal clear, because I'm about to lose my patience. So yes, he's more than a bit rude, but it's more than that too. I don't give half a dick what you heard. Now get the fuck out of my face before I burn your sorry ass. You see, if we just step outside and speak to the prostitute, sadly I don't have the medicine skill to get Joanna to open up to me, but if I did have the medicine skill, basically she'd reveal that she hates and fears Kachino, because yeah, the details never explicitly stated, but basically he does horrible, horrible things to the prostitutes of Gamora. And also, one of his right-hand men is Clandon, who literally murders prostitutes and keeps recordings of it in his room for his own entertainment. So I don't want him running this casino that's got a brothel attached to it either. Both of these options, bad options. And that's not just wild speculation on my part too. We know for a fact Kachino's got a bit of a special thing for Joanna. If Kachino takes over the casino, Joanna just disappears without explanation. At that exact moment, she just disappears off the map forever, presumably spirited away to his hotel room never to be released again. So, we're not going to be letting any of that happen. So rather than letting the existing bosses blow up the strip, or helping Kajino take over, I'm going for option three, which technically isn't actually part of any mission whatsoever, but it does work as far as the NCR are concerned. But uh, to pull this one off, I'm going to be needing a bit of firepower, and that means sneaking some decent guns past the doorman. But John, I hear you cry. Your sneak is notoriously terrible. Well, 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 well. We can actually sort that one out. You see, sneak is a function of agility. And agility is, yeah, a stat I can actually boost fairly easily. Here we go. Remember all those fire ants we fought back in the ant nest? Some of them were dropping fire ant nectar, which gives you a very, very welcome agility plus four. And of course, every point of agility is worth two points in derived skills. So agility is boosted to six, significantly jumping up sneak to 42. On top of that, just very quickly read myself a magazine about sneaking. And there's the 50 threshold we need to get our holdout weapons past the doorman. So now, I'm back inside the casino, but I get myself, yes indeed, the camera, that stays on you anyway, because that's actually a quest item, even though the quest is technically over, together with all of the grenades, one plasma pistol, but more importantly, pew pew, which I believe is the single most powerful weapon you can actually sneak into a casino, because you're only allowed to actually sneak small weapons in, regardless of how high your sneak is. Technically, the sawn off shotgun is a little bit higher on paper, but in most real combat situations, you're not actually going to be landing every single pellet, so I'd say pew pew is still your best bet. It's definitely the most powerful single shot you're going to be able to get off, so damage 84 inside a casino, absolutely beautiful. So now, now I've got myself some serious firepower. Now, using that lovely sneak I literally just boosted, Let's see if we can very quickly grab Kachino's journal. Absolutely lovely. You can just get a key for 300 caps off the person at the front desk and just get it from his room. But honestly, this is a very easy thing to steal because, once again, as we've discussed previously, as it's a note, Kachino's journal is both weightless and valueless, making it one of the easiest items in the game to steal. So that's all absolutely lovely. And yes, indeed, sale of chems, weapons, personal transactions, diddly diddly dee, basically Kachino's in a lot of trouble. 
That book can get me killed if the wrong people see it. Let's talk. What do you want? What can I do for you? Now, weirdly at this point, even though you've blatantly got the advantage over him, yeah, what you're kind of supposed to suggest to him as part of how little we know is, hey, how about I help you take over the entire flipping casino? So no, 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 no. How do you think the family would react if they were to see this casino? I can't stop you, but that's going to mean my death. I can make it with your while to give it to me, though. Plus, if you go to the bosses, I can't help you stop what they've been doing. Ah, that's his angle. Technically, he's arguing he's gonna help you stop the bomb. Which he is, but other people are gonna suffer for it, so no, 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 no. Instead, we just take the journal right over here to this here doorman. Hey, buddy, Zawara is off limits to everyone but family. Yeah, but, uh, fun fact. I've got some business with the bosses. What business is that? Kachino's been doing some very bad things and I'd like to immediately shop him in. Yeah? Give me what you got. What the fuck? Oh shit. Yeah, go talk to Nero or Big Saul upstairs. They'll want to see this. I'll send Kachino to the office as well. Alright, so now I'm allowed upstairs with the key he just gave me. Absolutely lovely. So we can now go straight up to the boss's office immediately. I've got myself an invitation. You see, if you do this quest as the game sort of implies you ought to be doing it, you don't actually meet the bosses or have anything to do with them till right at the end. But uh, no, doing it this way, we can just skip straight to the bosses. You got something you need to talk about? I love Big Sal's voice. He's got a brilliant voice. And yes, indeed, one of your lieutenants is dealing behind your back, Big Sal. The fuck is this shit? Kachino, you dumb motherfucker. Yeah, we are going to have some words with Kachino. Meet me in my office. Alright, and I'm guessing they're not just going to be Kachino, I'm giving you your four-week notice. So Big Sal opens up his office that's normally very hard locked, so that's now open. We've also got ourselves a Button Man. This guy literally only spawns in if you do it this way, which is kind of fun. Right, so these two are going to have a chat. Kachino, you really disappointed me. I'm sorry, boss. Sometimes I just can't control myself. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I swear I can turn this around. Just give me another chance. I don't want to fucking hear it. You've lost the trust of the family. Goodbye. I hope hell isn't too hot for you. And there we go. We've now got ourselves one dead Kachino. In fact, even if you didn't have the sneak to actually bring any guns in, Kachino's got a 44 revolver on him that's actually pretty bloody strong. So, uh, okay, you didn't even need to do that first step I did. Even with literally no skill whatsoever, there's a really powerful gun just right here. Thanks for bringing Kachino's transgressions to our attention. Shame we had to put him down. He was a good lieutenant. And now at this point, Big Sal is going to try and recruit me to help him build the big old bomb to blow up the strip. But rather than doing that, I've got a better plan, which is the only thing the NCR wanted was the Omertas unable to do whatever it is their plan was. If the Omerta leadership is completely destroyed, that's good enough. So with Kachino dead, all I need is the existing bosses dead. And by bosses, I mean boss. Because the game is satisfied if a single boss goes down, that both of them have been removed. For some reason, only one of them can't run the business by themselves. So, if Big Sal were to just say, I don't know, die right now, that's it. The NCR is satisfied. The strip's not going to get blown up. Joanna's not going to be abducted. Everybody wins. Apart from Kachino and the bosses, but as we've established, they're horrible people, so it's fine. So it sure is lucky I brought one of the most powerful holdout weapons in the game in here with me, isn't it? Though, if I pull this out, they will go hostile in just a minute. But that's absolutely fine, because, uh, fun thing about this particular layout, his office is surprisingly close by to the edge of the casino. I can just basically uh, run across here, through there, over the balcony, and out. Probably maybe two guards between me and the doors, and once I leave the doors, that's it, the Omertas won't follow, nobody else cares. So what we're just gonna do right now is get nice and hidden behind Big Sal, absolutely lovely. Pull out Pew Pew, just get that, and boom. 
He's now dead. The game even says, oh my goodness, that's good karma. He's going to be really annoyed at me, but he's using a shotgun. Shotguns are worthless against my armor. So you're going to try and use maybe a pistol too. I'm just going to hop over the side over here. They're going to realize something's up sooner or later. But uh, yeah, with my armor and the fact they're using rapid weapons, this is going to be... Okay, this might not be 100% fine. And no, I just got away with that. Just got away with that one. And that's it. They don't actually bother following you. Job flipping done. Also, what's even nicer is, even if you declare war on them, they actually give you your weapons on the way out that they had stored inside their armory. So that's just lovely of them. Thank you guys. That's very kind. Now, technically, my character never actually figured out what the plan was because I didn't do enough work for Big Sal to be brought in on the actual plan. But that's all absolutely 100% fine because I can just lie. Say they were attacking New Reno. None of the NCR's concern. So, job flipping done. Let's move on. I wouldn't dismiss it that lightly, but it's nothing we need to get involved with for now. Good work, I suppose. Now that that's out of the way, let's see. Mr. House was a concern, but someone conveniently dealt with him for us. You're welcome. Oh, that reminds me. You might be happy to know that your efforts haven't gone unnoticed. The Brass have been throwing around the idea of having the President visit the dam for a while now, to rally the troops and boost morale and such. With our recent achievements, they finally feel secure enough to stage the damn thing. But while it's being planned, I have one last mission for you. Several years ago, we managed to wrest the Helios-1 solar power station from the Brotherhood of Steel chapter local to this area. It was a crushing victory, but no one's heard a peep from the Brotherhood since. Most people assume the Brotherhood is scattered and not a threat. Recently, we've had scouts go missing in an area west of Helios, and I'm concerned that the Brotherhood is involved. I want you to find them, and once you do, finish them for good. Any questions? Not in the flipping slightest, let's blow them the hell up. So, next up, Brotherhood of Steel. But I was curious about something, so I just went and did a little test. In an alternate universe, if you do everything that Big Sal wants you to do, get the chlorine for a big old chlorine gas attack, help Troy get a big old pile of weapons, etc., then you go back to Sal, can you learn precisely what the plan is, and then kill him anyway? And if so, what do you tell Cassandra Moore? But even if you literally help out Big Sal, complete the quest how little we know, etc, 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 regardless, he won't actually tell you anything about the plan. The plan is called Racket, but that's all the info you're going to get out of me right now. But despite the implication he might be willing to tell you something later, there's literally nothing else I can do for this guy, so it would work out exactly the same way. However, I'm pretty satisfied with how things went in Universe A because I've dealt with all of the leadership, meaning the strip doesn't get blown up and Joanna survives. So, thumbs up all round. So, destroying an entire chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel, not exactly easy. Could get them on side if I was willing to do the entirety of Still in the Dark, but yeah, let's just say for a low skills character, not the easiest thing in the world. Vault 11 and Vault 22 are no joke. So, we want to actually destroy the flipping Brotherhood, not do Still in the Dark. Especially as we've already got power armor training, so we don't really need the Brotherhood for anything. So, easiest way to do it would be, yeah, turret control terminal, but that's locked hard. Useless Steve can't do that. Or, just go straight down to the reactor, very hard science check, gets me straight into the self-destruct system, that's flipping job done. Unfortunately, yeah, I can't do any of that, meaning we need to do things the more sneaky, stealthy way. And once again, wouldn't normally be useless Steve's forte, but I've got a trick up my sleeve. You see, we got the two options here. Very hard science check, or the terminal that needs the key cards, which weirdly is not actually a crime to interfere with. You'd think that would be red. You'd think, you know, the Brotherhood would not be keen on me tinkering with the self-destruct terminal, but no. They're just totally fine with me just pushing keys at random on this thing. Lovely. So yeah, the three key cards. Head Scribe, Head Paladin, Elder of the Chapter. Get three key cards, job flipping done. But pickpocketing is not always the easiest thing in the world. So it sure is lucky that Sneak is actually the easiest skill in the game to boost artificially. Because sure, my Sneak is 34 right now, but a stealth boy doesn't just provide a stealth field, it also boosts your sneak 
by 100. It's the single biggest skill boosting item in the game. There is no other item for any other skill that boosts your skill up to max by default. But a stealth boy does, which is very bloody convenient indeed. Which basically makes you as good at pickpocketing as you possibly can be. It's still kept, I believe, at 85% chance to steal. But, as we've discussed previously, as we just turned this on for a second... Key cards are weightless and have a value of only one, making them relatively very easy to steal. So we're just going to grab that and now we're going to run. In theory, of course, I could have brought the Night King Companion along to actually make my Stealth Boys last twice as long if I'm remembering that correctly. But I should be able to do this in a single Stealth Boy regardless. Elder's nice and easy because he stays seated right here. Key card number two, nice and easy. And we're very lucky here, Head Paladin Hardin is also seated right now. So just grab that off him. There we go. One Stealth Boy, three key cards. That's literally all you need to blow up the entire flipping bunker, which is absolutely gorgeous. And because Sneak is boosted by 100 with a Stealth Boy, basically Useless Steve could have come here at level 1 and just done that, as long as you can get your hands on a single Stealth Boy, which is very easy to do thanks to the rep contest site. So... Uh, yeah, that's certainly a nice, easy way to destroy the Brotherhood of Steel. There is one small thing standing between me and blowing up the Brotherhood of Steel, though. I need to, you know, escape from this place after I set off the self-destruct sequence. So, a second Stealth Boy will uh, hopefully get me out of here safely. Hopefully. And I might just down a couple of drugs just for safety as well. Okay, fresh stealth boy, down to only one at this point. Let's make this happen. This might take a few attempts, by the way. So, uh, here we go. Generate self-destruct password. Lovely. No one considers that a crime worthy of note. Activate the terminal. Blow up the bunker. Lovely. Yes, I would like to do that. I am now vilified, so they are going to start shooting me on sight. So the key is... Don't be seen. Now, there's technically nothing to stop them just walking over to that terminal and just, you know, aborting the self-destruct. But despite the loud klaxon, so they definitely know it's happening, no one actually will. Also, despite the loud klaxon, they won't bother evacuating. Basically, everyone's totally happy to just die at this point. Okay, caution. But that's not... Never mind, that's danger. But if I just break line of sight and go to a new load zone... We might be okay. Danger. But that's danger from those people back over there. All I need to do really is just get round the corner. There we go. Back to hidden. Because I broke line of sight and I was in stealth. We should be okay. Stay away from the turrets because they're now going to treat me as a hostile. Just around this. Never mind. Now I'm being shot. Now I'm being shot. But that's fine. Okay. When I say that's fine. Those turrets really hurt by the way. Um, Pop some stim packs. Be ready to... No, luckily he has to go through his standing up animation. Close doors behind me just to buy myself a bit of space here. And time to flip and go. Now there may or may not be a handful of extras outside waiting for me. They can spawn or sometimes they just don't. So ideally they won't. But I'm going to try and do a little trick here as well. Which is... Am I still hidden by the way? I'm still very hidden. The moment I step outside... I'm going to start hammering B to go to... No. That's fine. Because until they decide you're a threat, they're neutral to you. And as long as they're neutral to you, you're allowed to fast travel because they're not enemies. So even if you're about to be confronted, like say at the end of Veronica's quest, if you can just get into your pit boy fast enough, you can fast travel away and get around them that way. But looks like we don't actually need to, so we can just enjoy all of that lovely smoke. In fact, actually... It looks like the biggest threat to me right now is, in fact, a handful of scorpions. Beautiful. So, would you believe I've just failed a handful of quests? Namely, you know, the Brotherhood ones. All right, Colonel Moore, job done in what I will say is quite a badass fashion. Has the Brotherhood been found? Found and exploded. Oh, that's a relief. A Brotherhood attack while we're busy with the Legion would be catastrophic. The situation being what it is, we can't afford to lose even a single man unnecessarily. But we've got more important matters to attend to. The President is due to arrive soon, and we're sure the Legion won't waste such an opportunity. I want you to assist the security detail we've prepared for the President. His safety is critical to maintaining the men's fighting spirit. 
Go up to the visitor center and speak to Ranger Grant. He's in charge of security during the president's visit. Dismissed. All right. So now we've got to do you'll know it when it happens. And uh, there is a very nice, easy way to take care of this too, even for literally a skill zero character. Though I have just realized a, um, a slight error in my order of play here, which is, uh, yeah, to make that happen, I'm going to need a companion, a very particular companion. A companion who's currently hanging out in the penthouse of the Lucky 38, right next to, I assume, Veronica, who might not be desperately happy to see me under the circumstances. On the plus side, I never gave Veronica power armor, so if this does go nasty, I will have the advantage. Ah, hang on. I think we might have been lucky here. The last time I just missed Veronica was before I had the Lucky 38 presidential suite. As a result, she's never actually come here because she went back to the 188. Okay, we can never visit the 188 again, but that's okay. We don't really need to. And here we go. Rex. Rex is a very, very good boy. Not just because, you know, he's a good robot dog, which he is, but because he basically is by far the easiest way to sort out you'll know it when it happens. Although I'm going to be honest, because Rex is a dog, I've decided I'm going to help him. I'm fully aware that I just failed Veronica's companion quest by blowing up her home and all of her friends, but she was a human and Rex is a dog. So we're going to do better by Rex, damn it. And for that, we're going to be needing him a new brain. Easiest one to get access to by far, old lady Gibson. She'll just basically sell you one of her dog's brains. Here we go, 700 caps, though, uh, yeah. Because she is literally putting down one of her dogs to get the brain out, the line that follows is a tiny bit upsetting. Here, Ray. Mama's got something for you. <laughs> But it's fine, because I'm doing this to protect my robot dog. Alright, my robot dog shall now have a happy life. And we did establish Ray was getting on a bit, so this is all A-OK. -okay. Fun fact, by the way, most people think there are three brains you can actually put into uh, Rex. The Fiend Dog, the Legion Dog, and Ray here from Old Lady Gibson. There's actually a fourth as well, a fourth unmarked brain that exists just in case before you begin this quest, you've already killed all three dogs and they've despawned and thus there's no way to access those brains. If that happens, then the generic NCR guard dog close by to uh, Helios 1, when you kill him, he'll have a generic dog brain on him. And that dog does respawn, so there's always going to be a brain you have access to. But you'll never want to actually use that one because the other three brains provide bonuses. That brain provides no bonus whatsoever. Rex is exactly as effective as he was previously. But it's nice to know there is actually a fourth brain available. There we go. One quick operation later. Let's have a closer look at Rex. Ray's new brain looks fresh and healthy. Huzzah! And if you ask Rex how he's doing, he replies happy bark. So everything is lovely. We didn't need to do that, by the way. Rex without a new brain would have been just fine. But Rex wasn't happy, and Rex is a dog, so Rex shall be made happy. This is important. Anyway, we've got a dog with us, and that's very important, because you'll know it when it happens has all sorts of ways you can successfully complete it. But what we basically want to happen is, the president needs to be assassinated as quickly as possible, thereby exposing him to the smallest possible amount of threat, because there are engineers and snipers and diddly diddly d. So just in case anything goes wrong there, we basically want him evacuated immediately. Now I could use a combination of repair and explosive skills, in order to identify that the vertebrate's going to be booby-trapped and then sort it out in diddly diddly d. But yeah, the dog lets me just bypass all of that with a very nice, easy workaround. So, dog in hand, or by my side, I suppose, uh, let's get caught up with Ranger Grant. There's one thing we do need to get off him. Ask him about security arrangements and then follow up by telling him you're going to need access everywhere. There's no skill check or anything here. Just as long as you ask for it, you'll get it. All right, I'll give you full access. All right, with that in hand and the dog by my side, we're now ready to complete this quest ludicrously easily. So, the game suggests you investigate the area for clues to figure out what the Legion's gonna do. We don't need to bother with that. None of that nonsense. Just head straight outside, have a quick chat to Ranger Grant, get the show on the road. Have you finished your security sweep? I've done literally nothing but yes. Looks like that's his vertebrate coming right now. It's showtime. Let's not mess this up. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some security procedures to oversee. Okay, so the vertebird is coming in. There it is in the distance. I'm allowed straight through because I requested all access. So straight through over here and straight up top to the actual little vertebird helipad thing. So now we just wait for the president to arrive. Please don't get squished by vertebird Rex. I've gone to a lot of trouble to get you a new brain. So what we do now is just chill out up here, wait for the president to make his appearance. So, Vertibird arrives, and this engineer starts walking towards the Vertibird. Is there a problem here? Why, yes, there is. Because as it turns out, Rex makes a handful of little growly noises, and yes, indeed, my dog doesn't like you. Well, that's too bad. I'm just here to enjoy the show, so if you don't mind... And then we just say, you know what? Maybe I should go and get the military police. Bad idea. Die, infidel! And he pretty much exposes his cover straight away. His head just explodes because everybody else immediately says, oh, bloody hell, he was definitely bad. And the moment that happens, the president's evacuation begins instantly. So therefore, the sniper over there has no time to take a shot. That guy is already dead. President leaves immediately. That's it. Mission complete. Because that guy, I didn't even need to shoot him. Somebody else shot him. His head just flipping burst. And he does have a redundant failsafe detonator on him, but he never had a chance to plant the bomb because we spoke to him before he actually made his way over to the vertebrate. Well, probably anyway. Yep, I cannot actually trigger this thing. There's definitely no bomb on the vertebrate. And the reason that was so easy was because of Rex immediately identifying the Legion spy, who's a good boy. Fun fact though, you can do the same thing even without Rex by borrowing this dog, but you do need to have the Animal Friends perk for Ranger Stevens to lend you his dog. So, Cassandra Moore's ready to shove me into the endgame, but there are a tiny few bits and pieces I need to do first, just in terms of the final setup for my character, because I'm not quite ready for Linnaeus just yet. I need just one more level up to get myself where I need to be and a handful of equipment too. So let's quickly go and grab ourselves perhaps the second easiest 500 XP in the game. The easiest of course we already covered, Classic Inspiration, which is a ridiculous amount of XP and money, but this is pretty damn good too. Here we go in the Asus Theatre, Tommy Torini needs some new acts as part of the quest talent pool and uh, this is ludicrously easy for a solid amount of XP. And talent pool is nice and easy for two reasons. One, there's basically no skill checks involved and two, all four of the entertainers you're supposed to recruit are in ludicrously easy to get to low level areas. In fact, the first one is literally in sight of the casino, it's Billy Knight the Comedian right there. So, no skill checks, he just runs straight on over. Hadrian over at the Wrangler, who hilariously you can speak to while he's on stage supposedly doing his acts, he doesn't actually care, is a little bit more complicated. Because to get Hadrian out of his contract, you're gonna need to pass a 50 speech check. But if you've got literally no skills, you can just handle it with caps, and as we've discussed, those are not in short supply in New Vegas. In fact, it's literally just 150 caps, that's nothing. And then we're back onto Easy Street with Bruce Isaac. Oh, please don't kill me. I swear I'll have... Wait, you... You don't work for Mr. Bishop, do you? Who rather delightfully does make a big old pile of references to Fallout 2, which is lovely. Sorry, it's just... You look like his type, you know? You got that hard-ass wasteland explorer thing going on. Okay, that's a good meta joke about Fallout 2 and the Fallout franchise in general. That's marvellous. But once again, no skill checks whatsoever, he's on his way. And I just realised I came back to the 188, because it's closest to the Lonesome Drifter, but um... Okay. Veronica doesn't seem to be shooting me... yet. What's up? In fact, okay, she's... she's surprisingly chill. Are you cool coming with me, Veronica? Let's go make trouble. Right, she's... she's actually willing to join me, that's fascinating. I mean, officially I failed I could make you care, which is why I assumed she'd be hostile, but no, she's just pretty chill with me. I suppose technically I wasn't really spotted, and if there were any witnesses, they're dead now, so fair enough. And final individual, Lonesome Drifter, fabulous moustache, off you go. 
Ah, uh, yes, I forgot. Technically, he insists on me listening to his life story first, but after that, he'll just be on his way. There we go, and now he walks straight over a fire. That was pretty damn badass. And the job is completed. So yeah, four individuals, all in safe low-level areas, not a single speech check that's unavoidable, 150 cap cost, even if you've got zero skills whatsoever. So yeah, really easy XP. Fun thing you may have never noticed, by the way, the board for the tops does actually get updated with the axe as you recruit them. And they do literally perform at the time that they're supposed to be performing. So, I've moved time to about quarter past seven, meaning in about 40 minutes, Bruce Isaac is supposed to be performing. And there we go, 500 XP, super easy. So, last level up, though my character is pitifully underpowered because of that whole Intelligence 1 thing, I need speech up to 72. That's what I need. Alright, could go a bit higher than that, but we don't need higher than that. And that means I can put some more love and attention into energy weapons. So I'm as powerful as I can be going into the final battle. And here we go. 8pm rolls around, meaning Bruce Isaac heads up to the stage. And now if you want to, you could just enjoy him doing some singing. Now you may notice that this voice sounds a little bit different, it's not just reusing a track off the radio or anything. Now the reason for that is, this is Josh Sawyer doing the singing, because they needed the voices doing relatively last minute. So Josh, who can sing, just stepped in and did the voices for the performance, which is just wonderful. Okay, so those are the skills I need, but now I just need to sort out the equipment, because uh, yeah, you're probably thinking, John, you're still not ready for Lanius, what have you done, why didn't you put more into speech? Well, I don't need any more in speech. I can now get what I need to, because charisma and speech are relatively easy to boost. Right now my speech is at 72. With the naughty nightwear, that gets my speech straight up to a much more convenient, actually 83, because I took the implant for luck if I recall. So uh, yeah, that gets my luck to 3, so plus 1 to literally everything. My final meeting people gets me to 93, therefore. So as a result, I'm seven short of what I need to get past Lanius unharmed. However, every point in Charisma gets me two to speech. Now, Charisma is really easy to boost, but I've been a little bit unlucky. And also, Useless Steve is useless. If I had Science of 50, I could just go over to the Great Khans and pretty much invent Party Time Mentats. Part time mentats are, I think it's plus four to charisma. So that would be everything I would need right there. Also, when I killed that Ant Queen, she could have dropped Ant Queen pheromones, but it's only an 8% chance. So that was really to be expected. But if I'd had both of them, I could boost my charisma a huge amount. Instead, I'm stuck with what I'm stuck with. So I've got some basic mentats here. That's charisma plus one. Next up, Headwear, because I can't actually wear the various plus charisma outfits because I need to be wearing the naughty nightwear for the plus 10. That's more powerful than any boost. Well, technically, if there was an outfit that gave you more than plus 5 charisma, that would be better, but such a thing doesn't exist. So, fun fact, there are literally two bits of headwear in the entire game that boost your charisma. One of them's the T-51B Power Armor Helmet, and I kind of just blew up the Brotherhood, so not sure where I'm going to be getting one of those from. The other one is a little bit more obscure. I'm after Eulogy Jones's hats. But John, you vat reject, I hear you cry. Eulogy Jones's hat isn't in Fallout New Vegas. Eulogy Jones is a character in Fallout 3, you've got all confused. Well, Eulogy Jones indeed is not in Fallout New Vegas, but his hat rather mysteriously is. So Rod face down over here, this is the guy you give a cap to, and he gives you some rather useful advice. Very useful advice, in fact. It can open up various ways of dealing with King's Gambit you otherwise don't have access to. Now, I don't actually need any of the advice he's going to give me. Instead, I'm just going to keep giving him money over and over and over again. So here, have a cap. And there we go. He tells me about the Kings. Lovely. And now I'm just going to keep giving him money, like over and over again until I've basically exhausted all the advice he can give me. So yep, I'm just happy to just go straight through this. Just keep giving him money. Don't need any of the advice, I just want him to get rich. 
And there we go. You might have to step outside and wait for a day because he doesn't like putting his hat on while you're watching. But if he gets rich enough, then he will just acquire a hat from a pimp on the far side of the nation. How this works is not 100% clear. So next up, of course, we need to get the hat. That bit's a bit simpler. You see, there are three characters in Freeside who can be killed without consequence. Dick thinks everyone thinks you're doing the world a favour, the unnamed vagrant over there, and poor old Rockface. So, I'm very sorry about this. What do you think you're doing? And there we go, a head rolls off. Don't even suffer any Freeside infamy. And yes, indeed, I kind of needed that hat. This is it. This is the final form of useless Steve. So you can see that with the pyjamas and the hat on, my speech is now 85, which is great. Magazine, 95. Mentads, 97. I need another two charisma from somewhere. Now obviously, the most clear answer is booze. But booze can't be stacked, only one type of alcohol is allowed to be active at any one time. So if I drink one whiskey and one vodka, it doesn't matter. It's still plus one, except for one fun thing, which is there's a weird quirk in this game about one particular bit of alcohol. Because the vast majority of food and drink, including booze, is affected by the survival skill. The higher your survival skill, the more benefits you get out of it. So if I had survival of 100, I'd actually be able to get charisma plus three out of any whiskey whatsoever. But obviously useless Steve can't do that. So uh, the only answer is one particular potentially slightly bugged form of alcohol. And weirdly enough, this super drink lives literally within sight of the start of the game. I need to get myself some moonshine, which if I'm lucky, Trudy might still be selling. Okay, I'm trying to remember at this point. Was Trudy one of the people who died during Rad Scorpion Gate? Because I'm increasingly worried she is, because, um, she's not showed up to work today. Thankfully, when I was stealing her moonshine at the beginning of the game, I missed one of them. So there is one moonshine up here, because moonshine is very, very special. Unlike every other form of booze in the game, moonshine is simply hard-coded to give plus two to charisma, minus two to intelligence, plus two to strength. Doesn't matter whether your survival is zero or a hundred, it will always be that. For some reason, this one bit of booze is not affected by survival when everything else is. I assume it's a bug, but I don't care, I'm using it anyway. Right, probably shouldn't go into battle dress like this though, we'll save all this good stuff for later. So, everything in hand, time to check in with Cassandra Moore and kick off the end of the game. Sir, I don't know what happened. A bunch of legionnaires just stormed into the power station. Into the power station? How is that possible? I don't know, sir. There was some talk of them entering through the clog intake tunnels, but I don't have any confirmation. On my way up here, there was some chatter about their commander, the Legate, I think he's called, set up at some kind of base on the Eastern Bank. Okay, listen here. Unless we can get some additional support, I'm gonna need you to help me resolve this situation. You need to make your way to this camp they have on the Eastern Bank and take out the Legate. That should hamstring this attack. And don't worry about reinforcements, I've got them coming in myself, sir. All right, let's make this flipping happen. We have got ourselves a big old pile of legionaries, but at this point with my armor on, energy weapons should be pretty much maxed out. So the Q35 should do an excellent job tearing these guys apart. And bear in mind, it's not just me. I do have some friends here. So I'm just gonna help out with you. Please don't cross my line of fire, by the way. No, don't, I just said don't cross my line of fire. What did I just say? And here we go. The NCR are getting up to high levels. In fact, wow, that's three anti-material rifles. That's going to do some good work. And you? Yeah, headshots. Three headshots should do the job. Bear in mind, though, I'm not going to be getting criticals, like, at all, actually. So, yeah, in the NCR stage of this fight, I should be mainly just running through this lower area for now. Unlike the Legion, where you start on the other side and have to work your way through this area. Or Yes Man or House, where you end up just, uh, yeah, doing more up top. So all I need to do for the time being is just keep on keeping on. You know, thinking about it, I really should have probably brought some more ammo. I might be running a bit on the low side as time goes by. Are you guys going to follow me through a load zone, by the way? Oh, hang on. Excuse 
flipping me. I'm busy. Oh, there we go. Got myself a flipping critical there. Largy flipping da. Then I got myself killed. Okay, need to watch my health a bit more. Very hard mode. Not kidding. I tell you what, I am getting lucky on the old critical strikes at this point. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. So we're doing a good job. No, no guns for you. No guns for any of you. And please stop shooting my friends. Downside is no one around here other than me is going to be using energy weapons. So we are going to be, yeah, potentially running a bit on the, uh, bit on the dry side very quickly. Right. Keep on keeping on. Don't hang around too long because many, many enemies are going to be spawning in. Like right over there. But that's fine. I can do some good work against you lads. Just let these guys eat a bit of fire for me. Focus on the Centurions. They're the more dangerous ones. Yeah, the basic lads have only got themselves like sledgehammers. But I'm kind of, kind of boxed in by you. So, okay. Might just take you out because Prime Legionaries are no joke. And... Where are all of these criticals coming from? I don't know, but for some reason, I'm suddenly getting a bunch of criticals. It's very, very useful. Right, handful of that shots for you. That is crippled, which is going to keep you down on the ground. Down you go. Okay, NCR, good start for those guys. And plenty of anti-material rifle lads still with me. Oh yeah, we have got the hardcore Desert Rangers showing up at this point, And the Legion is not looking that tough. In fact, they're getting stuck on stairs and trying to use knives. Bad call. Very bad call. No, no, no. No, you flipping don't. Get off that ranger. I want him alive. So we're just going to shoot you in the back of the head for a minute. And more coming in with... Oh, super sledges. But got lucky there. Just knocked down out of it. Oh, now he's got a gun. Which is arguably worse, actually. They're actually yeah, a lot more dangerous when they... When they pick up guns. Because if they see anti-material rifles on the ground, they will just go for them. Just keep pushing... Threw them as best you can. I don't even know who threw that explosive. But honestly, best thing might be to just say, screw it. We'll just push through. They're going to start picking up guns, actually. The downside of uh, leaving them be is the Legion will win. And then they'll start picking up anti-material rifles. And that's when they start getting really dangerous. Why are you guys actually just hobbling around rather than shooting? Yeah, you see, he's got himself a gun now. Luckily, that's just a basic car. Uh, hunting rifle by the loopsy of it. Down he goes. That's a good kill. That's a good clean kill right over there. You're trying to take out you. Prime Legionary is almost dead. You're almost dead too. Almost out of um, microfusion cells. Luckily, I do have backup energy cells for Pew Pew, but it is not as good a gun. I'm concerned about that as a thing I'm going to have to do. Right, you guys are actually looking okay for the time being. Let's go over to Pew Pew for now. Okay, reload Pew Pew, which needs to be reloaded, you know, constantly, pretty much. You get melted. Guys, provide me with some cover, please. All right, screw plans related to flushing out the Legion, diddly diddly D. I do not have the ammo or indeed the health for any of this. All the stim packs, actually. We're just going to push straight on as fast as we flipping can. Here we go. Made it to the visitor center. Got some good guys in power armor. We've now made it to the thing proper. Now we just need to, yeah, push our way over the dam. I don't have the ammo to do it, but with all the help I've recruited, we should still probably be fine. There's more. Hang on. You legion, are you? No, you're actually flipping Khans. Marvelous. Fun fact, by the way, if you tell the Khans to fight for the NCR, but then you actually don't join the NCR side, i.e. like Shelper's uh, house or something, then the NCR will shoot the friendly Khans regardless, which is kind of amusing. Okay, stay back. Let the Khans do as much of the work as we can here. And yeah, just let them be worn down. The Khans are going to be in trouble sooner rather than later, but nope, NCR troopers are pushing forward. There's going to be a few more spawning in yet, but we're okay for the minute. Right, here come the reinforcements. I've got close enough to trigger them. Fall back to the Khans. Let them do some of the work, please. Hide. There we go. Just hide at the back. Let the Khans do some work if we can. Get some good hits in ourselves. And boom. That should be you almost dead. They are definitely targeting me. Where are the NCR? Okay, NCR Rangers are pushing up as well. Love it. In fact, I'm almost level 20. They've picked up flipping light machine guns or something from somewhere. 
Right, one of you goes down, please. Yeah, you're using light machine guns or marksman's rifles or something or another. Still, finally, that should be you almost out. Definitely got one last shot on me. Yeah, the Legion are not kidding about. Can I get one hit in? Yeah, one laser shot to the head. Off your head pops. This is good. And because of those cunts throwing themselves against the Legion, I've now got myself a bit of extra breathing room. And, uh, okay, that should be energy weapons 100. All the rest of this, none of it helps me, I don't think. Screw it, medicine will be useful. As would fight the power. Yes, Legion, plus two damage threshold, 5% critical chance. I'll flip it, take it. And, oh, in comes the firepower. Yeah, in the NCR route, you get a better view of the boomers coming in, doing some beautiful, beautiful work. Well done, Lance. Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet, though. I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Bloody hell. Here we go. This is working a bit better. I've got the NCR helping me out here. Full back. Make sure everybody else present is actually going to be, you know, assisting. And there's the critical. Good. More and more and more criticals. That's what I need. Still, thanks to the boomers, we got ourselves some clean air. And Alpha Squad Tome. Boom. Big old pile of rangers. So all we need to do now is just slowly push up. And by the way, you guys are going to be doing the uh, the heavy lifting on this occasion. I'm just going to focus on doing what I can to the Centurions. They're the toughest lads right over there. I'm literally out of ammo. Okay, how about the Q35? Uh-oh. Okay, I am... Um, I've not brought enough ammo. Okay, uh, deploy satellite weaponry... This may or may not be about to work. Sometimes this thing just breaks. And on this occasion... Yeah, it just broke. That's fine. On the plus side, reinforcements coming in together with hopefully not an orbital strike at this point. Good. Good, good, good. Enclave now present and correct. And look at them go. Well done, lads. We've got rangers. We've got enclaves. We've got a satellite weapon that's literally never going to fire. Because this thing does bug out all of the flipping time. Excuse me. I've got a sledgehammer now. I don't really know how to use it. But we're just going to give it a go regardless. You know what? It's fine. I think you guys have now got this. You guys have now got this well under control. I feel like I don't really need to... Uh, to do much at this point. So my weird glitchy satellite can just be weird and glitchy. You guys just stay with me. Follow me. Murder everyone. If you guys end up dead. Honestly that's that's fine under the circumstances. Uh, there should be a few more yet. But not many. We're getting close to the camp at this point. There we go. Cannibal Johnson right on the front lines. Uh, where are the rest? Of okay the rangers are following me. This is very useful, because I now am basically out of ammo. Aside from the BB gun. <laughs> I've got the BB gun, that's... Okay, then then the scenery. New Vegas, are you feeling okay? Because everything's suddenly breaking. Okay, game seems to have calmed down. The bridge is actually spawning in. The rangers have cleared the way for me. Okay, now it's just the camp. Though, admittedly, I was planning to, to sneak in. Sneaking in with a broken satellite weapon that keeps indicating where I am. Maybe not gonna fly so well. And yes, amusingly, Cannibal Johnson will follow you inside the camp. The Rangers won't, but Cannibal Johnson will. So, okay. Me and you, Cannibal Johnson, we're gonna make this stick right now. By which I mean, you're gonna make this stick and I'm just gonna basically, um, sneak past. Right, last stealth boy in the world. Let's flip it go. On the plus side, the satellite stopped going off, so that's nice, but yeah, we got more people ahead of us yet. Not many, and Cannibal Johnson's going to be doing the lion's share of the work here. That's right, Cannibal Johnson, you just keep that guy busy. I'm going to make a run for Linnaeus himself, all right? You just take care of him with your big old minigun. And good, you're clever enough to back off while firing. That's marvellous. They're just going over there too. Cannibal Johnson is. Okay, Cannibal Johnson is the big damn hero who's going to make this flipping happen. All right, I'm just going to start. Yep, I'm hidden for the time being. Good, 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 good. Okay, it's time to break out the ultimate flipping weapon here as the NCR charge forwards. Step one, put on some pajamas. Step two, put on pimp hats. Step three, use some recreational drugs. Step four, drink an entire jug of moonshine. 
And the final important step, read a magazine about how to meet people. We're gonna do all of this and then we're gonna talk down the monster of the east. Because as long as I'm drunk and high and wearing pyjamas and a pimp hat and I've recently read a magazine about how to socialise with people, my speech is a hundred. Fun fact though, if I actually did have access to all of the charisma boosting cams, like say part-time mentats, and I'd taken comprehension, you can get your speech up to 100 from a base of only 52. If your charisma is 1, you boost it to 10, you've got comprehension, you've got everything. Which is just ludicrous, but it is a thing you can do, yes. So, with that in play, it is time for Pajama Pimp Hat Useless Steve to save the damn world. And here we go. It is not the strength of the West that will slow you, it is their weakness. Your weakness? You seek to thwart me by claiming the Legion is too strong for you? No, no, no. The NCR's weakness is its size. It'll take your entire army to hold the West, and then you'll lose the East. That does not mean we would not succeed. Yeah, but the East... The East was a hard-fought campaign. Even now, Kaisar drew too much of the Legion's blood needed there for this. Hoover Dam is but a place. I will not have it be the gravestone of the Legion, whether quickly, or as you describe, slowly, by attrition. And there we go. You need to naff off. Goodbye, Legged. Lovely to meet you. And can I just say that I am thrilled that the Monster of the East has been talked down and the NCR has been saved by a pimp hat pyjama drunken high loser. That's, that's just wonderful. And off he goes, meaning at this point, yeah, you two guys are supposed to die, actually, to the Legate killing you. So in which case, not 100%. You survived? Well done. Um, so, yeah, these guys are supposed to be killed by the Legate. So where are you planning to, to go now, precisely? <laughs> They're supposed to be killed in a scripted event, but I talked him down before they did. Also, what happened to your... Uh-oh. You guys have just... You guys have just surrendered them. Um... I mean... Alright, that's... That's good. I mean, can you really blame them? I'd surrender to this too. Oh, hang on. There's some form of violence going on. I don't know who's shooting at who right now, but there's still... There's still something. Okay, the, um... The NCR showed up. Day late and a dollar short, but... Uh-oh, there's Moya. Okay, run for the gate. Just run for the flipping gate. I think we've already won. Just make it to the gate and... There it is! <laughs> Slight delay on the explosion there. I quite like that that just happened with a bit of a delay, so Useless Steve comically turned around. Flippin' love it. That's a fine bit of work back there. Truth told, I'm surprised you made it out of there in one piece. You and the dam. I'm impressed to say the least, and that's no easy thing. You've secured NCR's future. The administration sends its thanks for what it's worth. And it was my duty, General. I am just glad that the world's most useless individual was able to help you out. As long as I had sufficient access to booze and pimp hats. And we're glad to have you. And whether you're a soldier of the Republic or not, you're it in my eyes. Sometimes the Republic gets lost along the way while it's trying to follow its instincts. But when soldiers like you come along... Soldiers like me! Oh, soldiers like useless Steve! And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again. And the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The New California Republic celebrated its second victory at Hoover Dam, establishing definitive control over the entire Mojave Wasteland. Soon after, they negotiated terms to annex the Strip, Freeside, and many surrounding communities. The Mojave Wasteland, at long last, had entirely fallen under the NCR's banner. The courier, fair and even-handed in his dealings throughout the wasteland, was honored by the NCR for his support of the military at Hoover Dam. He was presented with the Golden Branch, the highest civilian decoration given by the Republic. With the help of the Gunrunners, the Boomers developed a healthy trading relationship with the NCR. Eventually, the boomers began wandering out into the wasteland while still preventing outsiders from entering Nellis. Buried beneath tons of rubble, the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel was no more. 
Those few who were outside the Hidden Valley Bunker when it was destroyed, settled into new lives, or headed west to find a new chapter to join. Though she'd seen the writing on the wall, the destruction of the Mojave Brotherhood came far more suddenly than Veronica had expected. The news devastated her. Despite her best efforts to leave her past behind, she found herself compelled to make one final journey to Hidden Valley. There, she paid her last respects to the only family she had ever known. Never weakened by NCR, the Fiends staged an attack against Camp McCarran during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam. Though NCR repulsed the Fiends, they suffered heavy losses in the process. After the NCR's victory at the dam, the followers of the Apocalypse were pushed out of Old Mormon Fort during its occupation by NCR forces. NCR further encouraged them to leave Outer Vegas entirely, and the followers had no choice but to comply. Arcade had hoped that Freeside would be able to remain independent of NCR rule, but he was glad that Caesar's Legion had been stopped at Hoover Dam. He tended to the sick in Freeside for a while longer, then returned to NCR territory to become a teacher with the followers there. Good Springs saw more trade along I-15 after NCR gained control of the Mojave Wasteland. But with that came a heavy burden of the Republic's taxes. Some old-timers, unable to handle the cost, were forced to move on, grumbling all the while. After the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, the Great Khans returned for a time to Red Rock Canyon. The NCR's pressing need to expand proved greater than its promise of amnesty. And before long, the government decided the Khans had to go. The surviving Great Khans were relocated to an isolated barren reservation, well north of NCR trade routes. Thanks to the Courier and Lily, a cure for the Nightkin schizophrenia was found shortly after Dr. Henry's experiment concluded. Nightkin and other super mutants in the wasteland flocked to Jacobstown, and the town became known as a haven where a mutant could find peace. Lily continued to take her medicine at half doses, and although she remembered her grandchildren, her mind remained muddled and confused. Eventually, she parted ways with the courier and traveled west, seeking the remnants of her past. With the king dead and most of their gang slain by the courier, the remaining kings fled the area, never to be heard from again. After Ray's brain was transplanted into Rex's cybernetic body, it took Rex some time to adjust to the old scrapyard dog's memories. Eventually, Rex's mind settled peacefully, melding his own memories with that of long travels with old Lady Gibson. Though Novak was a low-priority target for the Legion, many of Novak's citizens died in its defense. In the weeks that followed, several bright followers returned to Novak to help restore its defenses, allowing it to remain independent of NCR. With the dam firmly in their grasp, the NCR turned its attention towards wresting the correctional facility from Powder Ganger hands. The Powder Gangers are no match for the battle-hardened troops of the NCR, and summary execution awaited the Powder Gangers who managed to survive. Armed with a wide array of improvised explosives and stolen weapons, the Vault 19 Powder Gang tormented the Mojave Wasteland for years. Citizens of the NCR were favorite targets, and they always suffered the worst fates. After Hoover Dam, NCR helps rebuild Prim as a major stopping point on the Long 15. Though Prim citizens chafe under NCR's taxes, they benefit greatly from the increased protection and merchant traffic. After their bold arrival at Hoover Dam, the remnants disappeared as quickly as they came. Legends of their power spread throughout the Southwest, a reminder of why people once feared the sight of vertebrates in the sky. And so the Courier's Road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued, blood was spilled, and many lived and died just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes. Okay, so Useless Steve definitely ruined a few people's lives there. Just a few. Like, Daphne the Khans, Brotherhood, we already knew about. Veronica, not a fan, as it turns out. Though I will say, I was genuinely surprised to see the NCRCF ending there, because that ending is bunked. 
If you actually try and complete the prison for the NCR, you get an ending slide as if you hadn't. But apparently, if you don't actually bother dealing with the prison at all, then yeah, you actually get the correct ending, where the NCR move in down the line. So, okay, I was not expecting that. I've literally never seen that ending before. And the followers too. You said Steve screwed up, um, screwed up the followers. Quite a few people, as it turned out. Quite a few people, yes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of how the world's most useless man saved the Mojave. Though, to be honest, yes, as I say, uh, some people would probably put, uh, save in inverted commas there. I feel like some people would definitely feel they were not saved. In fact, he kind of, uh, ruined everything for quite a lot of people. But... What is next for you, Sir Steve? Because as I say, this is a grand finale, but only sort of, but not really, but maybe, but no, but yes. Because uh, I've got a plan, ladies and gentlemen. I would love useless Steve to go and visit some DLC, except of course, as some people have pointed out, useless Steve has, despite every disadvantage, actually stopped being quite so useless. Though obviously still a lot weaker due to very low specials and skills being, yeah, in general, very on the low side. Once you've got the ability to get speech up to 100 when you need to be at 100 and a single weapon skill up to 100, you're pretty much strong enough to play the game pretty conventionally. So, uh, we're going to be doing a bit of a reset. Because, of course, in the past, we have done ourselves a level 1 naked survival runs, and those are always great flipping fun. But how about we take that one step flipping further with Useless Steve? How about a level 1 naked useless survival run? Because I think that sounds like just the flipping thing. Starting next week, ladies and gentlemen, Useless Steve will be back, just as useless as he was when we first started off, as we dive into... The greatest bit of DLC that has ever existed for any game ever. I am talking, of course, about Old World Blues. The level 1 naked useless survival run beginning next week, ladies and gentlemen. I'm looking forward to it and simultaneously dreading it already. It's going to be magnificent and or terrible because, uh, yeah, that's... That's going to be interesting. Right, we'll discuss all of that in detail next week, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout New Vegas with The Worst Courier. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got ourselves... I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out... Die, you mooing bastards! Die! Die! Go, go away! Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.